things that uh, uh, and have been around a lot of head coaches and uh, uh, coordinators and so uh, I feel good about our head coach. There's no qualms, no issue if you're talking about any place else relative to uh, uh, the, the anything to do with coaching. Uh, uh, but within within certain boundaries, but specifically at the top, uh, we just got to uh, uh, get it done better. Skip, is it time for Jason Garrett to go? <sighs> you know, as the show opened, you made some good points. Jerry Jones is obviously the unofficial head coach of this team. Mm -hmm. So, in truth, it's time for Jerry to go, but we all know <laughs> yeah. that ain't happening. Nope. And yet, the problem now is, I, I know Jason, I knew, covered him when he was a player. If you were around him, you would say, he's a nice guy. Mm -hmm. He's way too nice to be the head coach of this team with all these outsized egos and personalities that you have to juggle as a head coach. What I love the most about Jimmy Johnson, and I know these were the great old days, but I covered all those great old days, Jimmy was the bad cop. Jason Garrett is as good a cop as you will ever find. He is Coach Clapper. He back slaps, butt slaps, continues just to stand on the sideline no matter how wrong it goes on the field, and he continues to clap at half speed. But, Skip, they don't have a bad they – they, all they got is good cop, good cop. They got, Jerry and Jason are both good cops. Good cops, and when they had Tony Romo at quarterback, they had three good cops, <laughs> and it won't work with three good cops. No. And I admired young Dak – for having the guts to step in last year early and effectively, quote unquote, crack the whip a little bit. He yeah. tried to have some bad cop in him. Mm -hmm. He tried to take over the locker room and say, that's unacceptable and that won't be accepted anymore. We, we won't do that anymore. Right. And he called out Des Bryant and said, I'll throw it to him when he's, when he's open and I don't want to hear another word of complaint in the huddle or on the sideline from Des Bryant. Well, you need somebody to do that. Unfortunately, it can't just be the second-year quarterback. Right. And Jason is like a son to Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. He's a good guy. He's a good family guy. He's all of the above, but there's no edge to him. There's no dynamic um, spark to him. When you need to inspire the football team, he just can't. It's not what he does, and the team knows he's a puppet. So no matter what he says, no matter how many times he claps his hands, Nobody's going to pay any attention to him because it's just Jason, Jerry's puppet. They're going to pay attention to what Jerry says, but Jerry just mostly says, I love Jason Garrett. I've been around a lot of coaches, a lot of coordinators, and he's made of the right stuff. Well, he is because he tells Jerry Jones everything he wants to hear about right. everything that goes wrong. Right. And we'll fix this. We'll get that. So you have to have some bad cop in charge. And the beauty of Jimmy and Jerry and the reason they were destined not to last very long is you had the baddest cop I was ever around. Jimmy Johnson, as a coach, had a little psycho in him mm -hmm. in a good way yeah. because the football team was scared to death of Jimmy Johnson. He's going to cut a running back on the last regular season game of 1992 when they're about to break through and win their first Super Bowl. Rumble. Last game of the year, they're playing. Mike Dick is bad Chicago Bears at Texas State. They've got them down in the fourth quarter. It's like the game's over. And Troy Emmett and Michael have taken their pads off on the sideline. And Kervin Richards, a backup tailback from Pitt, fumble. he has the audacity to fumble the next day. Jimmy cuts him. They go into the playoffs with no backup running back. Are you kidding me? You can't do that, Jimmy. Yeah, watch me. Yep. Well, Jerry would always step in and tell the locker room, it's okay. It's going to be okay. He just has his moods. He has his days. You know, you guys got to back off a little bit and give him a little space. That's just the way Jimmy is. Well, there's, there's no yin-yang here. There's no balance because it's all good. No matter if they... Losing is accepted here because nobody's afraid to lose in that locker room. Nobody is. It's okay to lose. We tried hard. We were fighting out there. No, you weren't. You, you didn't fight hard enough. Yeah. You didn't go in with an edge. This was a playoff for the playoffs game, right? Yeah. And you, you have to accept that. And at home, you have to play like your playoff lives depend desperate. on it. I didn't see it. No. You know desperate. You've been desperate Absolutely. before. And you rose to the desperate occasion. Mm -hmm. Nobody rose to the occasion yesterday. I'm, I'm sorry. So, again, as a fan of the lifelong fan of the Cowboys, do I think another coach would take them to the next level? I do. But I'm hamstrung and handicapped because the owner 
doesn't want a bad cop. No. He wants nobody who's going to say no to the owner. Exactly. He wants nobody who would say, Jerry, I got to have you back off. I need you to stay away from practice. I need you to back off from the locker room. I don't need you to do a press conference after every game out in the hall outside the locker room. Before I do my press yeah, conference. that's correct. It just won't work unless Jerry wants to, and he once said once upon a time to Vanity Fair magazine, I could coach the you-know-what out of this team. If Jerry wants to try, I'm game. I want to see one year. Well, just let it, let it fly, you know. Jerry did play college football. He's not a football idiot, but do I really think he could – Coach, do you know what out of this team? I'm sorry, I don't. Skip, Jason probably should go, but he won't because Jason is not the problem. The problem is higher up the food chain, as you mentioned. See, the thing is with Jason, Jason is gives the team good news. Jerry gives them great news. See, everybody always gets told what they want to hear. The reason why he doesn't want another Jimmy Johnson because Jimmy Johnson was made him stay, play at a distance. He would, you could not, listen, when I'm talking, ain't nobody talking before me or after me, that's it. He's addressing the players after wins before the head coach does. Mm -hmm. He's talking to the players, hey, this is what's going to go on. Skip, it, it won't work. He's missed out on a lot of, he's missed out on a lot of coaches that are better at head coaching than Jason Garrett, but they're not puppets. Now, if you want to be a head there's only 32 of these jobs, Skip. Now, if you want this job and just say, I'm head coach of the Cowboys, but you have nothing to do with it, you're not in charge of the Final 53, you're not in charge of uh, uh, the free agency roster, you're not in charge of the draft, if that's what you want, this is the job for you. Mm -hmm. But if you want to be thought of as a coach, this is not the job for you, Skip. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why he got rid of Jimmy. There's a reason why Parcel says, I got to go. And then you get Chan Gailey. You get Doug, uh, uh, Dave Campo. You, just you get all these other, them. you get, that's what you get. Puppet, puppet, puppet. And everybody, and everybody knows that, Skip. Yep. So, I, look, I, I don't know Jason as well as you know him, but he's always been great to me. You, Skip, think about this now. He was just coaching the year last year. Nobody really think he had anything. Listen, to... he went along for a great ride last year. Everybody that comes along, Jer Skip, you can't divorce the owner from his franchise. So he's not going anywhere. You can bring in a bunch of coaches, and Jerry, it's about him. Because think about it, Skip. He's more known, well known than any player that's on the roster now. Mm. So when you think about the Cowboys, you don't think about, like, the Patriots. You're going to think of Brady, uh, uh, Belichick or Brady. Forget the order. Okay, you go... You're not thinking about Mr. Kraft first. Talk about the Cowboys. What you think about? Jerry, mm -hmm. that's the way it is, Skip. Mm. He's in charge of this. The roster, the roster is not conducive to get big plays. So if you get down, you got to methodically go down the field. Remember you said they were about to go on a 12-play, 85-yard drive. They were in the midst of it, yeah. When's the last time you see them have one play strike? The most explosive player in your offense is your running back. But, Skip, you and I both know this. You're not going to get 50 and 60-yard runs every third or fourth no. game. That's not how it works. So, Jerry, you in charge of this roster. Give Dak some playmakers. You have none with the exception of your running back. And it was abundantly clear when he missed those six games how methodically you had to go down the field. you got to get big play potential because if you think you're going to just go 12 plays, we're going to score. 14 plays, we're going to score. You'll make, you'll make a mistake before you get the ball in the end zone. Okay. So, Jerry, this is – Jason Garrett is not the issue here, Skip. You know that. It's Jerry. So – for the fifth time in seven full seasons as head coach, Jason Garrett has once again missed the playoffs. Yeah. But to your point, actually, for the fifth time in the last seven seasons, Jerry Jones has missed the playoffs. <laughs> and if they lose at Philly, which who knows what the motivation will be for that game, they will fall once again to 8-8. Eight and eight. Well, This will be the fourth 8-8 eight and eight for Jason Garrett. He's 8-8, 8-8, 8-8, 8-8. That's who he is. If, he, if they win this game, next Sunday, Sunday's game is moot. Yeah. They okay. win, they, they'd have home field clinch throughout. So, Final thought. So Jason Garrett has now coached four games on the last Sunday or next to last Sunday of the regular season that were to get into the playoffs. And he lost all four of those games in 2011, 12, 13, and, of course, yesterday. So he's had four do or dies at the end of years, and he's lost all four of them. What would that tell you? He's just some guy. You know, he's, he's a nice guy. He's probably a better coordinator than he is a head coach. I always liked him as a coordinator. Any coach that's worth his his weight 
Mm-hmm. Skip, they're not going to put up with Jerry. Skip, I understand it's your franchise, but if you hire me to do the job, let me do the job. You said, okay, I'm hiring you to be the cook, but then you telling me what to cook. Mm-hmm. you telling me the ingredients to, it, to add yeah. to this dish. Well, we're looking at it as if uh, winning is always the main motivation. Yeah. Sometimes keeping your job is always the main motivation. That is correct. Plus- last, last quick point. In a weird way, I feel like Jerry's going to be even more empowered through the offseason because his grandson, Stephen's son, John Stephen mm-hmm. Jones, just won the st- he won back to back state high school football championships for Highland Park High School right in the middle of Dallas, Texas, yep. as a quarterback. Yeah, and I'm sure Jerry it happened at Jerry World, so I'm sure he feels like I got it in my blood. He's a chip off the old block, and it's going to empower him to say, "We can do this. We'll just keep everything in place." He he, and guess what? The grandson mm-hmm. has won more playoff games in that stadium than <laughs> that, well, you the team that, that they built right. the stadium well, for. Well, if one thing that we learned from the owners this year, we know that control and branding mm. is much more important than winning. So, oh, absolutely. Mm. I don't know what mm. his uh, full motivation is there. Well, the Cavs win the mm. finals rematch today against the Warriors. We'll discuss that next.